AJ Petiti, good morning. How's everything going? Fantastic, Scott. Well, it feels like yesterday the gun went off for spring yes. finally. We've got Easter, we got opening day. It's finally spring. And that chills out of the air now. You can see we don't even need a jacket anymore. And so it's a great time to get outside. You know, first and foremost, we've got Easter this weekend, so beautiful Easter color. Obviously, there's Easter lilies, but, you know, beautiful hydrangea are also gorgeous, and they really fill up a lot of space, either on a table or on a kind of a chest inside the kitchen. Um, beautiful calla lilies, azaleas, and then these are one of my favorites. So these you could actually bring inside the house, let them bloom, and then bring them outside. There's all kinds of, you know, daffodils, tulips, but hyacinths, the smell of them just smells like spring. They're so, I mean, the, the, and you put that inside your house and it just really fills up the air with just a beautiful fragrance and it just, it's spring. And so getting outside, we talked about it a little bit before, but I wanna make sure we put a reminder down because it is important to get it down in the next week to 10 days is if you've not gotten your step one down uh, within your lawns or doing your overseeding, um, also fertilizing your evergreens and a lot of your deciduous shrubs that are starting to flush out now it's really important to have that food source there you're starting to see magnolia begin to bloom inside the yard and so with that sign you want to make sure that you know you can start to see the trees waking up there's tree pollen in the air everybody's allergies are starting to go a little crazy so you want to make sure that you get out there and feed it so that that stuff's got a food source um, to make sure that it stays healthy but it's it's also time to plant it, you can start to see everything's kind of warming up things are starting to bloom Forsythia have been bloomed for a while now. And one of the great things about a nice, you know, slow warm up going through spring as opposed to just going from really cold to really hot is we get to enjoy flowers for a lot longer. So as it just gradually warms up throughout spring, as we begin to see things bloom inside the landscape, you know, we're gonna see things really hold their flowers, you know, providing there's not a huge storm, hopefully knock on wood, um, to knock all those off. But we should be able to just enjoy a really pretty spring after a really long winter so just some beautiful things that are out there this is actually a peach tree and so just they're starting to come into bloom now these will actually you can plant these in the yard um, and they'll hold up really well it's a great time to put pansies out so if you've got little planters that you know you're gonna put annuals in you know towards the end of May getting some pansies in and then you can actually put these in the landscape mm -hmm. And those will bloom actually this fall again. So, so AJ, can any of the any of the flowers, the flowers that you're talking about that you would normally have inside, can they withstand a cold night if you happen to leave them outside, or are they really delicate? No, no, no. Like with so the azaleas, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that those can stay inside. Those are not hardy azaleas. But the pansies, the hyacinths, um, this is a star, beautiful stargazer lily. The hydrangea, hydrangea, I'd be careful how cold it gets, but if it's you know. 40s, 50s, and above, you're okay. Mm -hmm. If it gets much below that, I'd be a little bit careful. But they're spending the nights outside, you know, in our stores right now. So, mm -hmm. you know, they're getting the same treatment. But if it gets into the 30s, we'll make sure we bring them in because they, they won't like that too, too much. But the rest of this, all these shrubs, the azaleas, the PJM rhododendrons, you know, the pansies, um, these beautiful scabiosa, this stuff is all good to go, and you're great to plant that outside. It's been outside for pretty much the entire spring now. Mm -hmm. um, so that stuff is all hardened off. So this, all the flowering shrubs, all the perennials, all that color, you can start going out, going ahead and uh, putting that outside right now. When was the last time you saw, I mean, I know we haven't had any, you know, record setting rainfall. I mean, it's been consistently wet, but nothing, you know, off the charts wet. But when was the last time we had that you remember, you know, a, a kind of a mid April quite like this? It's been a while, but you know, every season's different. Right. And so you just kind of take it, take it as it comes. But you know, it, it is a still a little bit wet, so you want to be careful, especially as you're fertilizing. But you know, especially the days that it dries out, we're getting a lot of wind. It's actually drying out more than you'd expect mm -hmm. um, to where you can get out and you can start to work the yards a little bit. So I'd get out there and take advantage of the moments that you have, because you know, it doesn't seem like we're gonna get into a huge stretch. Um, right you know, for a little while, but we're at, this week's looking pretty good. So I'd, I'd get out there and I'd get out there and garden. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're right. It's not going to be, you know, we're not going four or five, six days in the 70s. It just doesn't seem like that's going to happen. So yeah, get out and enjoy it. And uh, AJ, we'll be uh, getting into the garden here probably next couple of weeks and getting that cleaned up and getting that ready, right? Next week. Oh, all next right. Next week we're going to get the soil prepped and start getting into cold crops. And yeah, it's, it's go time. Looking forward to it. AJ Petiti, always a pleasure.